when does uh, Logan Paul make his big UFC oh, debut? Jesus. <laughs> that that guy would get murdered here. He would get hurt badly. Hurt badly. Yeah. If if I ever let him fight in the UFC, I should be arrested. Okay. And everybody's gonna go. You let CM Punk fight in the UFC. <clears throat> but hey, no hate for the kid. Good for him, man. Look, I mean, look at look at the business that guy has built on YouTube and and the. Uh, the number of pay-per-views they did on YouTube, you know, they did eight hundred thousand to ten bucks for two guys that, uh, you know, fight fans have never heard of. I guess you would say. So he's built a great business for himself. Good for him, and uh, it's awesome. But trust me, don't don't play around over here. You will you will get hurt. Logan Paul versus CM Punk. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I, I you know, every everybody always talks about CM Punk. CM Punk is one of the greatest guys you could ever meet. He's a super good guy. He was very passionate about the sport, and he put his reputation and everything on the line to come fight here. I respect him for it, and, uh, you know, obviously it didn't work out for him, but uh, he, he, he's got a lot, of, uh, a lot of heart and a lot of balls to do that. Uh, I guess looking at you as an expert, what do you make of his takedown defense? Nah, his takedown defense is what it is. He doesn't really have takedown defense. He tries to run and bail and do athletic stuff and try to roll across his head, try to create a scramble, but it's not like he's out here stuffing takedowns. And besides, whenever I grip him up, good luck with trying to move and scramble or whatever, you know. So, um, like I said, I don't think his takedown defense is good. Like, if you're going to a wrestling match and get taken down, like, over and over again, technically fall, they'll stop the match. He just got taken down so much. But, um, like, it, it, it's funny because he talks a lot, but he has a lot of holes in his game. Like, I don't really have any holes in my game. I just get greedy sometimes. Like, I go out there and I'm, like, super aggressive, which is stupid. But, I mean, it is what it is. You hear a lot of middleweights in the UFC complaining about, oh, I don't make enough money. I'm not complaining about that because I get crazy sometimes. And the UFC likes the craziness. The fans want to see the craziness. So I look back, I'm like, man, okay, all right, you need to tone it down a bit because you get all off balance just trying to knock people out. You know, I have great technique. You know, it's just sometimes I get a little, little greedy, a little, little gamble, just gamble a little too much out there instead of just sticking to it. So I like this because I have a guy that I can't get greedy against, just like Anderson Silva, okay? That fight didn't go my way. I won the fight, but I got jerked on the decision. But I wasn't. Super aggressive because I had a guy who I couldn't be super aggressive with. Leo Machida, I couldn't be super aggressive with. Uriah Hall, Uriah Hall, I couldn't be super aggressive with. So those guys are all did fine with. Okay, this guy is a maybe a tad bit quicker Anderson, but less MMA awareness, uh, less ju no jujitsu. Anderson Silva, so you take him down on the ground, this guy is nasty on the ground. You have to worry about a lot of stuff coming. You know how to slow down your punches. You know how to throw elbows from the bottom. Um, he just, he's just a super veteran. This guy has nothing on, on his back. You know what I mean? He's, he's basic. I see him throw up a triangle. It didn't look half bad, but I'm not really worried about <laughs> catching me in a triangle. I'll pick him up and spike him on his head. So, um, yeah, just definitely looking forward to the fight.
Keep going. So what is it? So this is the it's a running track. It submerges on the water. Lower you down, you run on the water. You know, right. Chest, then you got the. I've got some sauna going on here. Huh? Nice. Right, so we're gonna try that. The red red is good. It's not hot. It's just red. What does it do? Make sure it's hot. It's hot. It's hot. I mean, he's playing the bad guy in this one because he knows that Khabib's got such a he's got such a self righteous opinion of himself, given the fact that he's he is a dedicated religious man, that he's very committed to his sport, that you know that he is unbeaten. I think I think Connor's recognised that Khabib gets strength from the fact that he's the righteous party in this equation, and that Connor's the bad guy, and and Khabib's coming to teach him a lesson. So I think Connor was just continually, you know, he was just turning the volume up on, on what happened in New York. He's already set his stall out, and I think he's just kind of sticking with the character that he's going with. Uh, funny enough, uh, my wife was watching it with me, and she pointed out something really interesting. Um, when the conversation switched over to Nathan Poirier, it was like he took his mask off and, and, and turned into an analyst for a second. Like, it is a game he's playing, and it's there are moments like that when, when you can see him all of a sudden switch gears and talk about something else that's not related to his own career. Where you actually see the you know the genuine version of him. That press conference did wonders for this event, especially because there's been no promotional stuff leading up that that, that the two fighters have been involved in themselves. I think that first moment where you saw them face off, and and just following on your question, I actually think Khabib in that last moment when they were faced off at the press conference, I think he was rattled because I think that's when Dana all of a sudden was like, ha, ah, hang on a minute. Yeah. I think he saw Khabib uh, clench his right fist, and there was just a there was just a shift in his energy, but. I think Connor definitely got, got to him eventually. He just had to really turn, you know, really turn, pull out all the stops basically in, in comparison to what he did with Aldo. Now, now, Dan, obviously a lot of fans are very excited to know that John Jones will be back and we think that he'll be able to fight from October the 28th onwards. He'll be able to get back. We've seen he's been in training. For the sports perspective, is it good that John Jones is back? He had two failed drugs tests. He's now working with the authorities. Is it good for the sport to have John Jones back? Yeah, I mean, I think it is. People want to watch him fight. He's he's still one of the pound for pound best in the world, and I, and I think he I think he'll always be considered that. And and I think that, you know, we we just we need to see him competing at his best. And it's it's unfortunate that the circumstances around it make it all questionable. I think to be honest, the only person it reflects badly on is John Jones because now you know he's he's a drug cheat in, in most people's eyes, and now he's a snitch as well. And they're, they're two things that that are just they're, they're not easy to palate when, when you when you're looking for someone to support as an athlete. And I think that I think now uh, Nick's mentioned this many many times, and I agree with him. I think now is the time for John to really fully embrace the heel and just to be the bad guy, because I think he's done so much damage to his brand now. Um, you know, by, by the choices that he's made. I, I don't think he can come back and be the righteous party in this equation again. It just makes me want to watch him more. It absolutely does. Yeah. I, lo I love the whole heel thing. It's, al it's almost on the verge of being wrestling, yeah. how we've seen his character change, this storyline change. And it is a storyline from being that Nike-sponsored athlete who was the golden boy, he was the future of mixed martial arts, to getting caught bad-mouthing John Jones, uh, bad-mouthing Daniel Cormier when he thought he was on camera, yeah. now to be a snitch and a drugs cheat. And I mean, somebody, he should, and he should get a crashed, cape. And someone who crashed his car into a pregnant woman and ran away. He, need, he needs seeing she was okay. a leather outfit and a cape and some sort of mask. He needs to come out <laughs> as an X-Man, doesn't he? Bones. He evil does. bones. Evil bones. Listen, I, I just hope he does embrace it. You know, I just hope, hope he does come back and just, you know, acts, acts himself. You know, it, it's obviously a facade. It's obviously all this white and white kind of image that they've tried to portray around him just because his father's a preacher and everything else. It's completely and utterly blew up in the faces. And I just think John Jones needs to come back, allow the world to see him from what he is. He's the bad guy. Let him play the bad guy. Put him in with Daniel Cormier because you know what? John Jones becomes heavyweight champion of the world and we'll have a bad guy at the top of the tree. Is that bad for business? Absolutely not. So the question is, do we see John Jones versus Daniel Cormier 3? We've got to. I think we've got to. I think DC won't let it go. DC will want it on his ledger before he retires. And John Jones thinks that's easy money and an easy way to win the heavyweight title. It will happen, but it will happen to heavyweight. Dan, do you think we'll see it? 
Yeah, I do. I think, I, to be honest, I think DC will still push for it. And, and I think that the, the, he recognizes the fact that um, he's being held back in the pound for pound rankings because of, of his relationship with John Jones. I think people will always have that question in the back of their mind. And even if it's a subconscious decision, they won't put DC at the top of the pound for pound rankings, wherever John Jones is, is floating around and possibly competing.